Hey guys, I just wanted to jump on and talk a little bit about brain retraining and how the brain comes into play with fight or flight mode and how our past traumas can affect the way that our nervous system receives stimulus and triggers and cues and how that can keep us stuck in a cycle with symptoms. So uh, the motivation for this video came about today. I was talking with one of my clients about this and trying to explain the cycle um, and the metaphor really stuck. And so I figured I'd come on and just give this as a brief metaphor for what we're talking about a lot with brain and positive psychology and how that impacts symptoms and how that can be used a lot in our practices. Um, so the example today is we were talking a lot about how different stimuli can be neutral stimuli but depending on your past experiences, you interpret that stimuli in different ways. So the example in today's session was a knock on the door. And if you can just sit for a moment and imagine someone knocking on your door, and then what feeling does that evoke for you? What thoughts come up? What feelings come up? What physical sensations come up? And so in our example that we might talk about, let's have two different people. So there's someone with no trauma history and then someone with a trauma history. And this goes into brain retraining and you know cognitive science and how the amygdala and the hippocampus play into our thoughts translating into physical symptoms. So for someone with no trauma history, they hear a knock on the door and their hippocampus does not have any traumatic memories stored associated with that knock on the door. So their amygdala doesn't engage, their amygdala doesn't turn on and say there's a threat. So for them, they hear the knock on the door and they think maybe I have a package, maybe someone's bringing me flowers, maybe it's a friend visiting me. So they don't have any sort of anxiety for that knock on the door. Maybe they're excited. Someone with a trauma background hears a knock on the door and their hippocampus that has stored memories of trauma may associate that with an intruder, an attack, with police coming in to arrest someone in their family, like who knows, like whatever that might be, that knock unlocks the hippocampus's memories of a traumatic memory. That signals the amygdala to turn right away into fight or flight response, which floods our body with adrenaline and endorphins and we get anxiety attacks, we get heart palpitations, we get racing heart rate, we get sweaty, we get tremulous, we get scared. So instantly it shows cognitions going through the parts of the brain that then trigger a physical response. And that can put us into long-term hypervigilance. So it's not just fight or flight, rest or digest. That's not as simple as that. It's long-term over time on a continuum. Where do we start to live and hang out in our amygdala, in our hippocampus, in our nervous system? How does that translate? And it's oversimplifying it to say the amygdala can kind of get stuck in an on alert mode response, but that is over time how it feels. So if we're already there, we're already triggered, we're living in a state of stress and endorphins and cortisol and all of these hormones that come into play, then any other little trigger adds on and adds on and adds on. And that's why sometimes we might say, wow, I don't understand, I just don't feel resilient. Why can these people have all these stressors? And for me, that's exhausting, triggers a panic attack, triggers a flare up. It's because of traumas and the trauma might not be an emotional trauma that's just an example of like how PTSD might work in that situation but it could be medical trauma so when our bodies perceive a threat for maybe a viral infection or Lyme disease or um, chemical sensitivity why can some people be around air fresheners and some people that sends them into like anaphylaxis well it's because over time maybe our bodies had this mountain of trauma building up from other environmental exposures or infections. It could be emotional trauma piled onto that. And now in the amygdala, it's like this gatekeeper of, is this a threat? Is this not a threat? It's almost like um, on your car, like the gas tank or whatever kind of, I'm not really using technical terms here, but you can kind of envision, you know, that, that on or off switch, are we in danger? Are we not in danger? That's where we start to get into that as well. And so that same stimulus that to someone is just neutral for someone who has medical trauma, who has piled up stored emotional trauma, having a stimulus like even an air freshener smell sends them over the edge because the hippocampus remembers there's something about this that we don't like. There's something about this that feels like a threat. The amygdala feels like there's a threat there. And then it sends you into a cascade of symptoms. And this is where the brain retraining starts to come in is if we can artificially at first start to put new memories in place and tell our brain this is not a threat 
we are okay, we are safe. We acknowledge there was past trauma, but we're doing new things to change those neural pathways. We're putting ourselves in safe environment. Actually talking to yourself out loud, that's where the neuro-linguistic programming comes into so many of these programs. You're talking yourself through it. You're sensing, okay, here's a stimuli coming in. Is it actually dangerous or is that because of the way my brain works? It's not. Let's break this down. Let's challenge these thoughts. Let's put ourselves in situations where we have little challenges that aren't going to trigger something huge. And we start to notice, okay, this was not that scary. I'm pairing it with something that makes me feel safe. So maybe a person that makes you feel safe or a movie or an activity that makes you laugh and is fun. And then you're pairing that with a challenge of like, hey, what if someone knocked on the door right now? Where would I be? Zero to 10. Why would that be? Okay, let me start to imagine that. Let me imagine how it would feel if someone knocked on the door and I felt safe. Let me go up and go to the door and rehearse me being successful. Now, again, that's such an easier example to give. But when it comes to things like chronic fatigue syndrome and saying, oh, if I go for that walk today, I'm not going to be able to do anything else the rest of the week. I'm going to be so wiped out we're projecting, we're, we're already guessing and thinking and catastrophizing how bad it will be. But if we start to say, well, the walk on its own might be kind of neutral. How are my thoughts then telling my amygdala that that walk is threatening? And so if we can kind of scale, and again, we're not saying go out and run a marathon, but that's where the idea of hippocampus and memory storage and then how the amygdala translates that, which causes our symptoms to get worse, that's where these brain retraining programs are really at the heart getting to. And so many of them then focus on creating healthy coping skills so that your nervous system is in general much calmer. So yoga, meditation, time in nature, things that elevate your mood, but then also putting yourself in your memory or in your future focused memory, creating new core memories that haven't happened yet, visualizing success. I am in this place, I'm picturing it, I'm seeing it, I'm hearing it, I'm smelling it, all of the things that are there when I'm being successful. Then our hippocampus starts to associate, oh, that trigger happened, but I have all of this stored memory of that's no longer threatening to me. Now the amygdala is not turning on. We're not activating that cascade of endorphins and adrenaline and then the cortisol that comes from that. We're not initiating the physical symptoms that make us feel exhausted and scared and hypervigilant all at the same time. So I thought that the example might help and the door knocking metaphor was just so simple but made so much sense. So I figured I'd jump on and that's our little nugget of wisdom for this week on understanding the brain and its role in actual real physical symptoms. So it's not saying it's in your head, but it's showing in Western medicine how often they like take the head off the body and put that to a counselor. And then they treat these physical symptoms and they act like they're not related. But like 90% of our serotonin and some of our neurotransmitters are made in our gut. And then that goes up to our brain. So we can't pretend anymore that they're not related. And a thought that then triggers something within our amygdala to determine if there's a threat then releases endorphins. So we have a mind-body connection. So I don't like to oversimplify. People don't like brain retraining because they're like, no, that doctor thinks it's all in my head. They think I'm crazy. It's not it. It's just understanding there's such an integral connection there that if we're ignoring the mind-body connection and we're not working on the cognitions, the traumas, the stored memories and how that interacts with our body, we're missing a whole piece of healing. So I really hope that that helps and it explains a little bit of how brain retraining works and why it's important. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Any, you know, successes or victories that you're having, you know, leave that below as well. And I hope that you enjoy some of our other yoga things and I look forward to sharing more soon. Have a great rest of your day.